This is a production of Cornell University. markets, uh, particularly in this case with willow, but we have a lot of opportunities with crops that we can grow in New York, whether it's farm waste or switchgrass or a whole host of energy sources. And I appreciate Cornell Cooperative being here and our other uh, advisors who uh, from FSA who help us really help our farmers uh, make sure that they're prospering businesses and have the resources they need to be successful. So I'm really excited to be here and I'm excited to listen. So why don't you start it off? Well, I, and I also want to introduce our, our host, Eileen Yeager. Uh, this is her farm, and she's taken an interest in, in the opportunities of the uh, Biomass Crop Assistance Program, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for hosting us. My father's family were a little basket makers. Wow. <laughs> so this comes around. In the blood. <laughs> comes right around. That's great. Great. All right. Well, um, first again, thank you for the... Uh, for coming to promote this, uh, the Bioenergy Project. It will have far-reaching impact on local landowners, citizens of local communities, and energy security for the next generation. Uh, on June 13th of this year, Secretary Vilsack announced the creation of New York's uh, nine-county biomass crop assistance program area. Uh, the biomass crop assistance program, known as BCAP, is one more example of how the Obama administration and Senator Gillibrand Support increasing the production of renewable, homegrown fuel. This effort is vital to reducing our country's reliance on foreign oil while creating good paying jobs and expanding market opportunities for the agricultural community. New York is only one of only three states uh, this year to announce the creation of um, approved recap project areas. Nationwide, nine more areas have been approved which will result in more than 860 producer contracts and uh, in growing willow biomass, hybrid poplar, and warm season grass. Over nearly 50,000 acres will be enrolled in 10 states. Now this initiative helps New York farmers and landowners transition unproductive cropland and under underutilized pasture land with the establishment of woody biomass production. Participants will enter into 11-year contracts with the USDA's Farm Service Agency. In return, we will provide annual rental rates and uh, do cost sharing with establishing the uh, willow shrub, which is a hardy, fast-growing type of biomass fuel. New York has a goal of rolling 3,500 acres in shrub willow production under this program by a sign-up deadline of September 14th. To let you know, it, and we'll get more about this from our experts at SUNY ESF and ReEnergy, but, but shrub will is a short rotation perennial crop which can be harvested multiple times from each planting, and they're cut every three years. Um, and the shrub will is planted here is ideally suited for this region because it reflects 25 years of research conducted by uh, SUNY ESF on uh, field testing and development of systems for making this a viable crop for New York. Um, USDA has set aside uh, $4.28 million for enrollment in New York to share the cost of establishing these plantings and the annual rental payments here in Oswego County. Uh, the annual rental payments would be approximately $28 to $30 per acre, and the cost sharing for plant material, land preparation, and planting would be up to $741 per acre. And during the harvest years, partic participants will be paid by the biomass conversion facility, ReEnergy, for uh, delivering the uh, shrub willow biomass to their conversion facilities. Um, and as I say, the BCAP initiative provides farmers with new opportunities to, to earn income and uh, create more productive use of un previously unproductive land. Besides the financial advantages to growers, the BCAP project area ramps up the efforts in New York to meet its state goal of sourcing 24% of its electric power generation from renewables in 2013. This BCAP project area 
planted during shrub <laughs> willow is expected to generate more than 100 megawatts of electricity. It also estimated that it will create 144 jobs, both directly and indirectly, to help establish this economic renewable resource over the years. Well, I think <laughs> I would like now to introduce Larry Richardson from ReEnergy. Thank you very much, Jim. I am uh, Larry Richardson, and uh, I am the chief executive officer and one of the co-founders of ReEnergy Holdings, which is a renewable energy company that is headquartered in upstate New York in the Albany area. And uh, we have, uh, we own and operate biomass to energy facilities in uh, three states here in the Northeast, uh, in Maine, in Connecticut, but most importantly today, uh, here in upstate New York. And uh, in fact, 100 of our 300 megawatts of installed capacity are located here in New York one facility in Lyons Falls in Lewis County, another in Shanagay up in Franklin County, and then our newest facility, which is right up the road here in uh, Jefferson County. It is a 60-megawatt facility that is located inside the fence at Fort Drum. And in this case, we are in the process of converting that facility from coal as its primary fuel to biomass as its primary fuel. And in doing so, we're going to be bringing a facility back into operation that's been shut down for over two years. And we will be certainly creating jobs inside the fence at the facility, but also we will be rejuvenating the timber harvesting industry, which will be a significant part of the biomass, the forest residues that are left on the forest floor right now will be used as a primary fuel uh, at the Fort Drum facility. And ultimately our objective there is to sell secure renewable energy directly to Fort Drum. Uh, the facility is large enough to supply all of Fort Drum's energy needs. So in that case we can kind of complete the loop from the uh, use of sustainable fuels uh, to the use of renewable energy uh, by the Department of Defense. So yeah. we're particularly excited about that. They're a very good customer. <laughs> <laughs> and this initiative, uh, working in partnership with uh, ESF and Tim Bolt, Dr. Tim Bolt will be talking a bit about the, the, this uh, BCAP program itself in a moment. But we play an important role in this, this whole initiative, and that is between our three facilities, we will be the user of the product once it is grown and harvested. And uh, we will be entering into contracts, long-term contracts, with a defined price for this material once harvested. And so this will become part of our fuel stream in addition to the residues out of the forest. We will also be using this harvested shrub willow uh, as part of our fuel stream. Now we in fact have already conducted some trial uh, use of this material at our facility in Lyons Falls and the results were very positive and that's why we enthusiastically entered into this partnership with ESF to try to expand the program. And now, uh, Senator, with your assistance and uh, with this grant that has been awarded, uh, we will be a very a uh, happy part of this process, this coalition, uh, here over the next few years. So that when the first harvest comes off of the farmlands here in this part of New York State, in about three years, we will be there to use that material as fuel. So, and we are very excited about it. And, uh, you know, I will also add, uh, you know, with Senator Gillibrand's uh, position on the Agriculture Committee in the Senate and the uh, passage of the Farm Bill, the 2012 Farm Bill here just a few weeks ago actually, this BCAP program is a part of that initiative. And so we are very hopeful that funding will continue mm -hmm. to uh, expand this program in the future. We're going to work very hard on that, getting it through the house. <laughs> Therein may lie the challenge. Yeah. Sure. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tim Bolt with uh, SUNY ESF. 
So I'll just share with you a few uh, a few items about uh, Willow and, and appreciate the opportunity to come and talk with you and Senator for your support of this program. This is really the coming together of uh, over 25 years of research that we've been doing at the college. And for years and years we've had this goal to want to facilitate commercialization of the research that we do. So we tend to do very applied type work and have been very excited about trying to develop Willow as a crop for marginal lands here and give an opportunity landowners to put that land back into production, put some income back into those communities and give people an opportunity to, to generate a, a crop again on a lot of this marginal land. And so this is an exciting opportunity with your support and the support from USDA and of course the support from Re Energy. All those pieces uh, here come together in an opportunity to move this from something that's been, you know, occurring on plots that have 10 acres to 50 acres now to thousands of acres. And we hope that this is the beginning of something larger, that this would uh, bring enough familiarity to this crop in, in New York and the surrounding region that then there would be other opportunities to expand it further and make it a part of the agricultural infrastructure here. So we're very excited about it and see the opportunity to put um, you know, the idea of marginal land back into production, again, creating jobs here in the local economy. And also, it's a, it's a crop that has a lot of environmental benefits. So, a perennial crop on the landscape, as Jim had mentioned. Um, you know, we start, this is the material we start with. You put one of these sticks mm -hmm. in the ground, that's a piece of willow stem, yep. and, and it, and it grow. grows. Yep. Okay. Wow. And one of the other beauty, uh, beauties of willow is that it grows. You cut it off every three years, mm -hmm. uh, and it grows, sprouts again, so you don't have to keep replanting it. So when Larry was talking about buying, you know, over 10 years multiple harvests, you just plant it once and you harvest it every three can years. I have so two? you can have as many as <laughs> well, One for Henry, one for Theo. We'll plant these today. Okay. <laughs> for tomorrow in the morning. So that's an exciting thing where we've done studies and looked at it. It's a CO2 neutral crop. And so we're basically taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, storing it in the biomass. Uh, folks like We Energy will buy it and turn it into energy. That CO2 goes back to the atmosphere, and the next crop is out there growing the landscape takes it up again. So it'll help, you know, address those sort of environmental concerns and issues as well. So this is exciting uh, for, I think, all the partners involved. And now, it's have great you to identified all the properties where you want to grow, plant, grow the willow? No, so we're just getting started in that initiative. So you start meeting with farmers and seeing who's interested? In, in the next uh, week to 10 days, I would say we're going to have an announcement of several public meetings that will occur in northern great. New York. I bet uh, you'll get a lot of takers. Yes, for people to come and ask questions, learn as much as they need to be comfortable with the program. Uh, and and how many safe. acres are you hoping to plant in the first year? So the target is up to 3,500 acres, and the goal would be about half in the first year and half in the second year. That's true. So that over two years, we do extend that. 3,500. That's great. Wonderful. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, it's a great Congratulations. opportunity. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and really, I mean, we're very... You know, happy to have you here. Very glad that you, you know, help raise the awareness of that because the trick will be getting folks to come in yeah. and say, yeah, we want to participate well, in this program. Well, let me know when you have your regional meetings because if I can attend any of them, I will. Okay, that would be one. We just, once the farmers learn about the opportunity, I think it'll be great because there's a lot of unproductive land right now that they can use, use quite productively. Right. And it, I mean, this pasture just on our side here, I mean, that's an example of what, you know, it's abandoned pasture land. Uh, I'm telling someone, we used to grow most of our transportation fuel as hay for horses mm -hmm. and whatever. <laughs> yeah. And now we're, we're moving back into that, a little, a little different venue, but uh, that's the way Great. we're, that's where we're going to challenge, meet feature. this challenge. Any questions, particularly from our experts? being able to be paid off now and it's exciting because these solutions are what our country needs we need to be independent of Middle Eastern oil this is a perfect way for us to get there and we benefit greatly by strengthening our agricultural sector as a major industry for New York but also one that really sustains our quality of life and the beautiful state that we have so it's win-win for everyone it's really good and, and we're fortunate to have a senator who realizes the opportunities in upstate New York yeah, willing to fight so. for us Okay. Have questions for any of us? Yeah, do ask the experts. They're, they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to ask them.
Thank you. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.